Hey everybody, Steve here, and if you're relatively new to mining and you're sick and tired of dealing with all the nonsense that's associated with uh, using Windows 10, and by nonsense I mean A, getting a Windows 10 license, and B, installing Windows 10, and then C, actually getting Windows 10 to recognize more than, I think the threshold is right around seven or eight GPUs without crashing every five seconds, uh, I have got to share with you something that a lot of people already know, but if you don't know it, you're completely missing out, and that is Simple Mining OS. And what it is is it's, it's Linux-based, but don't let Linux scare you because, honestly, it is so simple. If you can install Windows 10, you can install this. And here's the benefit. You don't need a hard drive for it, so you don't need to go out and spend money on an SSD. All you need is a little 16 gig. They say 8 gig, but... I usually just, uh, from a standpoint of being on the safe side, get a little 16 gig um, thumb drive. You can get them for as low as six bucks. I got a USB 3 one for seven bucks on Amazon. So the benefits here are amazing. So I'm gonna just dive right in. Okay, so you're gonna need essentially just a, a little 16 gig thumb drive. All right, and I'm gonna walk through the whole process because I'm getting ready to uh, set up my third rig today. And uh, let me just show you how this goes. All right, so what you're going to do is go to simplemining.net and then come over here to this little uh, register button and click it and go ahead and register a new account. Now, obviously, I've registered an account, so I'm just going to go to login. So, okay, so over here, you've got this little grid. It's the download grid You uh, uh, for R series, RX series, and NV series. Uh, my card of choice is the AMD RX. I've got a bunch of uh, 500 series. So there's a checkbox here, so I know that uh, I can go ahead and download the OS. So I'm just going to go ahead right here and I'm just going to click on it and say file. Uh, it is 1.3 gigabytes, which is uh, a lot of data. So depending on your internet speed, uh, mine is fairly fast where I'm at and it took about 10 minutes. So um, yours may vary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the downloads folder and here I've got this disk image file. So now I don't need to do anything else with it other than remember where it is. So I'm going to minimize that window and then now I'm just gonna go and this is essentially the installer this is uh, a tool that will actually put the operating system on the flash drive so I'm just gonna go ahead and click this and yes I'm currently on Windows 64 right now so I'm gonna download it for Windows 64 save and this one's much quicker so it is done. Now it's an executable file, so let me just go ahead and click on it. And I'm going to run it. I'm going to get rid of the stuff in the back and get rid of this here because it might be a little confusing. And you got to agree. Okay, so after the installation, the program may have auto run, but if it didn't, you just want to go ahead and double click on this icon right here. And it is at this time that you want to go ahead and put your thumb drive into your USB port. On your computer okay so um, looks like everything's cool there and I'm just go ahead and select image and we're gonna select the image from our downloads which is right here simple minor RX and it ends in dot IMG and I'm gonna go ahead and say open and then it's gonna say which device well this says SanDisk Ultra USB 3.0 so there it is. I know that that's the one that I want to use. So this is the image. This is the one I want to use. And then you just go ahead and click flash. This is another process that will take a few minutes. So uh, I will go ahead and pause. So you'll see a couple of phases. Um, the first phase, it'll go from zero to 100% when it's flashing. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause it for right now. All right, it's been a good solid 10 minutes or so um, going through the flashing process. And as you can see, I'm at 99%. Once it gets to 100% flashing, I don't remember what it says. Oh, validating. Okay, so uh, now we're going to go through this validating process. And it says ETA 4 minutes and 40 seconds. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video so you don't have to sit here. It actually finished and caught me by surprise. So uh, anyhow, it just finished. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and kill this off and essentially what we're going to do next is we're going to just go to our uh, folder here and there's not a problem with it just ignore this don't just go ahead and continue without scanning we're going to open the folder and look at the files 
and we're going to get this config file. So this is extremely important, but only if you want to get paid. So you're going to want to go ahead and go into this config file. And here is a critical, critical, critical thing. You've got to change this right here with your name at your email.com. And then you're going to file and save it. Absolutely critical. Otherwise, there's no way for the system to know that you are who you are. And then you simply close this file. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my info in. Okay, so I've changed the config file to have my email address in it. And I go ahead and just go ahead and click out of this. And guess what? It's it. It's over. It's done. Uh, all we need to do is just change the BIOS uh, on our mining machine to recognize the USB first. And uh, things going to fire up and it's going to work beautifully. But before you do that, you're going to want to log in and you're going to want to pick a pool and uh, some other pertinent information. So let's go ahead and do this. First thing you're going to want to do is go over to Rig Groups. And you can add a group. It's going to go ahead and pick Add a Group. And here you get to decide what you want to mine. And of course, what you want to mine is going to be dependent on, you know, these three things right here, R, RX, or NV. Obviously, you're going to pick one that's relevant to your GPUs. And uh, there's some stuff that are not recommended crossed out here. They do a pretty good job of uh, helping you out. And you can see that there's lots and lots and lots of options. All right, so let's just look at... Um, couple of these. Uh, ETH Miner is a very popular one. You can pick this one. And you can see that assuming that you're logged in now, the configuration is going to be all set up for you. Okay, And that's what your configuration is going to look like. That's all going to look like gobbledygook um, to you before you get used to some of the Linux commands and stuff. But that's the beautiful thing about Simple Mining OS is you don't need to know Linux to do this. Uh, what you do need to know is what pool do you want to mine? And if you don't know what that means, then you're going to probably want to do some research on that uh, because, you know, everybody has their own opinions and preferences and stuff like that. All right. So, for example, if you were to pick this one right here, you'd be uh, mining for either Zcash or BTG, which is, I believe, Bitcoin Gold. And it gives you, it's, it's automatically going to construct the proper Linux command so that all you need to do is just select it and hit add group and you're good to go and then you can see here this is your your minor options right here once you get to know what the linux commands are you can go in here and you can make changes to them i believe that simple uh i believe that the simple mining os uh although i'm not 100 percent sure uh has stratum installed on it so that you don't have to do anything additional to uh benefit from stratum uh, what that does is it helps to increase your hash rate uh, that's just one more thing that i love about uh, this os it truly is simple so after that we're going to go from rig groups we're going to go over to rig list and you can see that i have two rigs right now both mining ethereum as you can see the first the first three have been bios flash but the second two have not yet and then here's this one right here where all of them have been bios flashed and if you don't know what that means, I'm going to be doing a video on that as well. But essentially, these GPUs straight out of the box are going to get you between probably oh, 18 and 22 mega hashes. Uh, but if you flash the BIOS on the GPUs, uh, you can get much more. Now, I caveat that by saying if you do it wrong, you could conceivably brick your GPU and uh, completely break it. Uh, but... There's plenty of information out there on the internet already, and I'm going to be adding to that pool uh, by creating a video on how I did mine. Okay, so one of the things that I absolutely love about this console is that I'm looking at it on a computer that's uh, not even remotely close to my miners. Okay, you could be across the room, across the house, or across the world and still access all of this information about what's going on with your mining. Another thing that I love is I get all my temperatures right here. Uh, the top row is how cool are my C, uh, how cool are my GPUs running, and the bottom one is how fast are the fans going. So you can see that uh, it's you know it's it's February right now. Uh, the window is open in the mining room and a fan's blowing nice cold air in on all of the rigs. So uh, so as you can see, everything is uh, running fairly cool. 
here are your core and your memory settings, and then over here are the actions. You can actually look at the console, if we want to look at the console and see exactly what's going on. Oh, also, you can access this information on a cell phone as well. If you're obsessive compulsive and you always want to know exactly what's going on with your rigs, uh, all you have to do is just fire up your cell phone and uh, you can, I don't believe there's an app for this yet, but uh, you can certainly go to uh, simpleminding.net, log in and see all this information here. So let's go into the overclocking portion. And as you can see, I have not made any changes here. But what I love about this is that I can target my temperature and I can target my minimum fan speed. So if I'm not at home where my rigs are and things get a little hot, I can actually slide this over and, you know, make the fans run uh, faster or I can pull this number down, um, try to bring the target temperature down. Bringing the target temperature down will obviously increase fan speed. All right, so this power stage, uh, as it states right here, uh, will feed a, a lower wattage. Uh, but you got to be careful about uh, stability. This is something that I have uh, not played with yet, but I'm going to continue to experiment. And uh, as I learn stuff, uh, I will be definitely sharing it. So lots and lots of configuration power, not just sitting next to the rig, but from halfway around the world. Uh, you can also reload the program. You can reboot the rig. This is something that additional that you can buy from uh, the guy who runs this site. I don't know what it is because I haven't looked at it yet, but keeping things simple. It's all right here. So now this guy is offering all of this value uh, for the mere low price of $2 a month per rig. So I think it's very uh, reasonable. Now, I, I must say I'm not affiliated with this guy at all. I don't make any money off of this uh, by, by pointing you in the general direction of Simple Mining OS. Um, I'm just thrilled with how it works. All right, so from the get-go, one of the things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tell Simple Mining OS where to send your money. So go into uh, Wallets. And you're going to want to put, uh, like, say, for example, if you're using a Coinbase account, you can go into your Coinbase account, get your Bitcoin address, get your Ethereum address, and uh, and copy and paste those those numbers over here. So that way, Simple Mining OS knows where to send your money when it comes time for a payout. All right, so the next step that I want to do is I want to show you how to look at where you're at with money. So we're going to go to Wallets. And depending on what pool you chose over on the uh, rig group, um, I'll show you this. Let me go back to I want to go back to rig group, and I want to show you that the pool that I chose is an Ethereum pool in the United States, and it's at dwarfpool.com. Okay, that just happens to be the one that I selected. That's how you know what pool you're in. All right, so that's going to be relevant when we go back to uh, rig list, and I want to go into wallets. So how do I get payout information? Well, I just said that I'm mining on Dwarf Pool, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on this, and I'm going to get an invalid wallet. And the reason for that is because it's trying to put this OX value in there twice. If you click next to OX and you back it up a couple just so that it says OX one time and then you hit enter, everything will work fine. And here is Dwarf Pool for my Ethereum, okay? And let's take a look at, I'm just going to kind of come down here a little bit and look at, this is my personal production right here, okay? Um, I'm not exactly sure how they arrive at this uh, submits, but essentially that's my percentage of the total pool. So I'm doing, you know, roughly over, between six and 700 on the submits. And if you take my number of submits, that's this line right here is my submits. And you can see where uh, I've dropped offline. Like for example, right here, I was mining at this level and I dropped offline because I got another GPU or two or however many it was at the time. Uh, I think right around here, uh, I added another rig. So I was up here and then right here, this drop right here is that I had all the electricity off uh, on the 7th because I had an electrician here and everything was off while we rewired the mining room uh, for more power. And then I got jumped back up uh, on here. This is probably a case where uh, my internet here is spotty, so it went down and we're pretty constant here up until about right here. Now this drop off right here um, is probably because the data hasn't come in yet. 
Um, but you know, this this basically shows what my personal shares are. My personal shares are between six and seven hundred, and that's six and between six and seven hundred of one point two million um, pool shares. So. Uh, I'm a very, very small percentage of this pool. As a matter of fact, this is my percentage right here, 0 0.005 is my percent. So that's how much I'm getting paid. Um, so the pool shares are 1.2 million and these blocks, I think these are solved blocks for this particular pool. So now, coming back up, uh, you can see how much uh, uh, my payout is. Now I had it set to 0 0.05 and that's a setting that you can control right here if you want to get paid. Uh, that's 5% uh, of an Ethereum. Right now I'm getting paid at, yeah, 10%, point 0.1 is 10% of one Ethereum coin, if you will. So it's paying me 0.1 and uh, what this is, is this is my current balance. So when this 80, when 0 0.086 trips to one, I'll get another payout. Uh, this is how much money that I've been paid since I started mining with Ethereum. Sometimes if a block uh, hasn't been confirmed yet, uh, you'll see an indication here that the block hasn't been confirmed yet, and that will pad this number right here in terms of un unconfirmed. Uh, but generally, it's it's this number plus this number is, is how much uh, they, they owe you. So lots and lots of data here um, in terms of exactly where I'm at. Now, if you were not mining with Dwarf Pool, if you were mining with one of the other pools, you'll probably have a console that looks very similar to this. So that's pretty much it. You know, between this pool, the, between this screen right here and this screen right here, I am just completely thrilled with how much data I can get here, with how much tracking I have here, with how much power I have in terms of overclocking if I want to. Uh, resetting everything this is just awesome I have to say that there's absolutely no reason in the world to pay for Windows load Windows have an SSD for Windows deal with the frustration of Windows and not have the luxury of as much remote information as you have right here and all of this without having to write a single line in the Linux terminal so anyhow like I said, I'm not affiliated with either Simple Mining or the Dwarf Pool. Um, I'm just a big fan. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a lot out of it. I've got so many more videos planned as I expand. As a matter of fact, my, my mining room is getting ready to take a complete overhaul uh, from where I'm at right now. Uh, from a cooling standpoint, I'm going to be building a cooling tent. And uh, obviously, I'll have all of that information uh, in a video. And as I add and as I make changes and as I learn stuff, I'm going to be sharing that with all of you. I appreciate the views. Please like, subscribe, comment. Um, I do not purport to be an expert at this. I am learning as I go. And uh, if you've got some constructive criticism or uh, any, any good tips, please go ahead and pop those into the comments below the video. So this is Steve signing off till the next video. I'll see ya.